Good morning. So why am I here? I've never been here before. But one of the real reasons why I'm here is to let you know from one person's experience how you have changed my life. I learned about FamilySearch.org three years ago when I was trying to find my Chinese family. Chinese family? You don't look Chinese. I am Hakka. I want to do one thing, and then I'm going to show you a short film, very short. But you're distracted. Chinese? What? So I like to do this. I like to take off my glasses. You look at my face, past the skin color, past the hair, and you decide for yourself, does she look Chinese? And then you'll stop wondering, and then you'll listen to me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start this way. Here I go. Oh, she does kind of look Chinese. <laughs> I'm going to be back in a minute, in two minutes actually, to tell you my story and to tell you that that is the very first time I have ever been interviewed by a big burly motorcycle rider and I can't wait to have it happen again. <laughs> so I'll be back in just a few minutes. This is a trailer from the documentary that my brothers and I shot about our search to find our Chinese grandfather's family in China and I'm going to tell you how it would never have been possible if not for you. I'll be right back. Oh, we all roll the tape. <laughs> part this and part that. We have to know where we're from. The best we might be able to do as the descendants of slaves is possibly go back two, maybe three generations, and that's about as far as we can go. I am not defined by slavery. We are not. It was a moment in time of a very, very, very long legacy of Africanness. We all grew up in uh, Harlem, New York. My parents settled on 163rd Street and Amsterdam Avenue, which I read later achieved some level of notoriety as being statistically the worst block in New York City. We felt an inherent danger in the neighborhood because we were, we were looked at, you know, as other than only because we had half Chinese mother. My grandfather's name is Samuel Lowe. My grandmother was Jamaican. My grandfather was Chinese. My mother told me she last saw her father when she was young. He left for China and never came back. I decided that I would just put out an out loud petition to my Jamaican family. Can you all help me find my Chinese grandfather? My cousin, John Hall, he said, oh, there are a lot of Chinese Jamaicans in Toronto for the Hakka conference. So I said to my brothers, we're going to this. They're like, okay. The Hakkas traveled from the north and are the migratory tribe and they are the adventurers and our theme, many places, and the one people. I was stunned out of my mind when Carol said that her Chokpo, her family's history, goes back to 600 BC. And I thought, what if my family has a Chokpo? This is Adasa's mother. And then Adasa was taken back to China with her father, Sam Lo. Our grandfather would have come here. Yes. It is the Hakka people who have traveled the length and breadth of the world. This is more than I ever hoped for. I knew that this was going to be emotional, but so what? What it was going to be was the fulfillment of my dream and my goal. My husband said, when you find these Chinese people in your family, what are you expecting to happen? My husband said, you know you're black? <laughs> I know I'm black. I expect that because I'm their family and they're my family, we'll be family. The venture that we're taking to China, it's like a dream come true to finally find some people who are related to me. I knew that I am a low and they will want me as much as I want them.
meet my mother. Do you see any resemblance? I didn't when I was a child. I didn't think I looked like my mother at all. And I'm not sure that I do now. But my mother and my grandfather were separated when she was three years old in Jamaica because my grandfather's Chinese family had decided, this guy's not coming back to China. So they sent him a Chinese wife, a Chinese bride to marry sight unseen. And then he went to my grandmother and said, I would like to raise our daughter with my Chinese wife. Oh, no, you don't. And so there was another African Jamaican partner by the name of Emma Allison. It was her house where you saw us walking through the gravestones, the tombstones, the graves there. And she was nicer than my grandmother because she said, okay. So their two children were actually raised by our grandfather and his Chinese wife. My grandmother decided that what she was going to do was keep my mother and her father apart for the rest of their lives, and that's exactly what she did. You can't do that to families. You can't separate them and expect that people will come out whole and happy. So my mother spent most of her life depressed. And then she married my father. My mother had immigrated to the United States, to Harlem, where she had family. And she became a single mother in Harlem with three children. And you see what we look like. You see what my mother looks like. I can tell you in so many ways it was interesting growing up in Harlem. It was okay until our mother showed up and she'd come outside and people would say, who is that? And sometimes it would turn out to be okay and sometimes we'd get into fights. I want to show you some pictures from my family, my Chinese family and my Jamaican, American, African, Black, Chinese family. So the story that I want to tell you and how it relates to you is that in June of 2012, as you heard in that film, we went to the Hakka Conference in Toronto. The Hakka people are a cultural minority in China, and around the world they number 70 to 80 million. In China, that's a minority. <laughs> and they have a conference every four years in Toronto, Canada. And while I was searching for any kind of clue, my cousin John Hall, who you saw, said, oh, the Hakka people in Toronto have told me to tell you that every four years is a conference. You should come. So we went. Six weeks later, I was in China meeting my 94-year-old aunt Adassa and my 87-year-old uncle Zhao Wu who never knew my mother existed. And how did I find them? When I left that conference in Toronto, my older brother Howard and I were at the Toronto airport. And I learned from a representative of Family Search at the conference, we have a database. You should just go in and type in whatever information you have. So I was sitting at the Toronto airport in the American Airlines lounge, and I typed in Samuel Lowe, Kingston, Jamaica. Guangdong, China, 1934, and in seconds, the manifest of the SS Adrastus, the passenger list came up. <sighs> and there was, there was my grandfather's name and the name of his Chinese wife and his youngest daughters leaving Jamaica for the last time to go to Hong Kong. And I couldn't breathe. My mother hadn't seen him nor knew, known anything about him in decades, in a lifetime. And in seconds, you all solved the mystery in our family. And I'm here because I want to thank you. I want you to know that if you ever wondered who benefits from this, I'm not a member of your church. I'm not, I'm a novice to this conference. And yet, someone from Family Search said, try this. And what I learned last night was that it was just months before that this database was actually uploaded. 
it changed my life forever. Because what happened was, when I saw my grandfather's name and I recovered, it was a five-hour flight to Los Angeles from Toronto, and by the time I landed, a colleague of mine to whom I had um, emailed this information, she went on and looked at the rest of the manifest and saw that there were more people in the Low Clan who were on this ship. And by the time I landed, she had researched even more and found the 1927 ship's passenger list. So to make the short, this very long story somewhat short, what ultimately happened was I was welcomed into the family along with my brothers and our offspring. So 20 of us black Chinese went to China and we gathered with 300 of my grandfather's direct descendants who assembled in Guangzhou, China to welcome us into the family. We children who had no family. We had grown up in Harlem with no aunts, no uncles, no cousins, an occasional, my, our father was in and out of our lives. We were alone people. And you all solved the mystery for us of where do I come from? Who am I related to? What's my lineage? What's my culture? So here's the answer. We got to Guangzhou. They drove us to Shenzhen, where our ancestral village is located, Lo Sui Hop. And Lo Sui Hop has been there for hundreds of years, maybe since the late 1700s. And what we learned was, I am the 151st generation of the Lo clan. My family's documented lineage, I understand that in Mandarin it's, uh, it's called a Jia Pu. In Cantonese, it's a Chuck Pu. Our documented lineage goes back 3,000 years. I can trace my Chinese family to the year 1006 BC. <laughs> and this Chuck Pu, when I learned of it and I learned of our ancestry, I said, oh, now that you know of my mother, can my mother be included? And they were like, oh, well, women are kind of parenthetical to this. It's the wives, the mothers, the daughters, the sisters, but women are not really included. I'm not really good at accepting defeat. <laughs> so that was in August of 2012. By the time we went back in December, the Chuck Poo was edited. And so my mother and her line are included in the Chuck Poo. So I, in my enthusiasm, said, yay, now black people are included in the Chuck Poo for the first time. <laughs> and my cousin, <laughs> who is racially the opposite of me, I'm three quarters black and one quarter Chinese. He is three quarters Chinese and one quarter black. And translating by our cousin, he said, black people have been in the chuck pool all along. <laughs> My mother is black. And I was like, right on, brother. <laughs> and so what you see here, these pictures that you're, going to, that you're looking at are a compilation of various celebrations. I know many of you are teetotalers, but Jamaicans and Chinese, we imbibe quite a bit. So a lot of what we do is around celebrating. That's my husband and that's our grandson. These two women are my first cousins. The one with the sunglasses on in the back is also a first cousin. That's my great nephew. And he was the youngest of us who traveled to China. Every person who was descended from my mother went to China and every one of us was welcomed. Now, my uncle Zhao Wu, is the person who, when he received this email, as I was pursuing, I, I, I need to find them, and, and, and my cousin, who turned out to be the co-chair of that conference, his name is Keith Lowe. And I went to him and I said, you're the first Chinese Jamaican I've ever met who's got the same last name as my grandfather and my mother. Can you help me? No, no, I've never heard of them. I don't know them. I've, I've never heard of them. So with the harassment, what did happen was 
uh, within about three weeks, he says, I'm going to contact my nephew in Hong Kong and ask him to ask the family in mainland China, has anyone heard of a Samuel Lowe? 24 hours later, the email comes back. My uncle says Samuel Lowe is his father. You got the ball rolling, and in less than six weeks, I was no longer lost. I was no longer floating in air. I was grounded, and most importantly, most importantly to me was when that happened, my mother was claimed. When that happened, my mother became a part of the family. You see that? That's our family tree on the wall in our ancestral village. And so what I think is important for me to share with you is that in no time these mysteries can be solved. Tonight, you all are helping so many more of us who are of African descent with the database that you're going to upload from the Freedmen's Bureau. I go to China all the time. In fact, I'm leaving for China tonight. Last night, we showed a, the shortened version of my documentary, which is an hour. The longer one is 90 minutes. And I was going to stay here just a bit longer, but the star of that film, for the people who saw it last night, and for those who didn't see it, it's going to show here again on Saturday, but the star of that film is my Uncle Zhao Wu, our family patriarch, who was an amazing man and was so excited that I could tell the story of his father's journey from China to Jamaica and how all of these children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren came to be around different continents. My uncle, um, let's see if I can do this here. Uh, this is a gathering at the luncheon where we all got together for the first time. But my uncle Zhao Wu, he died on Sunday at the age of 91. And is the closest thing to a grandfather I've ever had. And for just a short second, I thought, well, maybe what I should do is bow out of the conference because I have to get to China to honor him. And then I realized that's the last thing my uncle would want me to do. So my brothers and cousins from all around the world have gathered. They've, they've been WeChatting. I'm in China. I'm in Hong Kong. I've arrived. So I'm leaving here, and I'm going to arrive in China four hours before his funeral begins. And I'm here because I want to validate to you, and my uncle would want me to validate to you, that family is family. It doesn't matter the race of the family. If you look at this photo, this, thank you, thank you. If you look at this photo, this woman here, second from the right, is my Aunt Anita Maria. She is the youngest of my grandfather's children. She's racially Chinese, born in Jamaica, and lives her life, spans her time between Guangzhou and Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> this is the youngest of my Uncle Gilbert's children. He had 10, so he and my mother were the two children who were not taken to China by our grandfather. And that's because when I learned of my Uncle Gilbert and that he wasn't taken, he's the darkest of all of the children. He's biracial, and his skin color was about mine. And being a child of the United States, I presume that the reason why he was left behind was because he was darker skinned. I'm ashamed to say that that's what I thought, but that's the context in which I was raised. I got to China and my aunt Adassa, no, no, that's not why. Why? Because Ho Sui Yin, the Chinese wife, said, leave him to be first son for his mother. I'm going to have my own first sons. You know the significance of first sons in, in Chinese culture. The first son is responsible for the elders, for the parents. So the first son and the first son's wife knows that the parents will live with them. There is no question about what's going to happen with mom and dad. In China, the firstborn son has that responsibility. If you go back to the other picture, the other photo, the one right before then, the point that I want to show you is that these people 
are all either children, grandchildren, and the two gentlemen here, or great-grandchildren of Samuel Lo. His name is Lo Ding Chao. That's really his Chinese name. Look at the racial characteristics of these two guys. This is my oldest brother, who, by the way, is now the oldest grandson. He's got a lot of power in the family. And this is the second oldest grandson, Chi Man. Chi Man is the racial opposite of Elric, my brother. Three quarters African American, three quarters black, and one quarter Chinese. Three quarters Chinese and one quarter black. Look at their skin tone. What difference does race make? There's me over here. I wish my hair had been better. <laughs> Here's me, and this is my Uncle Gilbert's daughter. We are the same racial mixture. This is my grandfather's great-granddaughter, who's racially Chinese. And in this room are another 200 lows. And we came in such ranges of color, but we all were one big family. You probably have questions, I hope you do, but we don't have time to take them. So what I'd like to say to you is that we're going to have a webinar on February 17th. Uh, I'll be back from China by then and we'll answer whatever questions you'd like, but the, you can find the information about it uh, on the Africa Channel web uh, page or the Facebook page. This is a picture that we took when we first met. This is my favorite picture of all time because in that photo, as you can see, she is my Aunt Adassa's oldest daughter. This is my Aunt Adassa one month younger than my mother. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> you all should understand, no. Um, and then you begin to see that these people, this is my mother's sister, my mother's sister, my mother's sister, my mother's brother, my mother's brother. In the past year, Aunt Adassa died one year ago. Uncle Zhao Gong died six months ago. He was 87, she was 96, and this is Uncle Zhao Wu, who just passed. Um, this guy here is the one who told me that there were blacks in the Chukpu before, me, before us. His name is Young Man, and Young Man, who speaks no English, has dubbed me the CEO of Cousins. <laughs> I thank you very much for listening to my story. I will be here for just a little longer. My book, which is very different from the film, uh, my book is very different from the film, um, is, go is, being, is for sale here, but the film is having a special presentation on the Africa Channel, which, full disclosure, is a television network that my family owns. And then we will have the book here at um, Maya's Books, uh, they're signed, and then the DVD, and if you order the DVD, actually, I, I shot a completely second documentary, which gathers all the cousins from all around the world, and we're roaming and tracing our grandfather's footsteps, and we talk more about Family Search and what it did for us in that documentary. And most importantly, and most especially, I hope that what I'm serving today is not this amorphous, somebody out there is being helped. I hope that what you'll take away from this is an understanding and a, that allows you to see that I am one of those millions of nameless, faceless people who are wandering the planet, searching for our family and our roots. And I thank God for you, because if not for you, I'm not sure where I would be today. I will be headed to China tonight. I'm grateful to you and my family is very grateful. Thank you.